I'm going to use the same example I did over there. It's kind of funny. This is an odd setup. Usually when we get to a room, Baptists like to sit in the back. <laughs> they don't come up to the front. Uh, a few years back, I'm in college, and I, uh, uh, there's this course out there. It's called Where There's a Will, There's an End. Some of you may have heard of it. Good. It was really good. I paid a couple hundred bucks for it. Made my grades in college just go right up. One of the things, they were just practical things, just common sense, practical stuff. One of the things said, sitting in the front, you see the speaker. You get what I'm giving to you. Don't worry about it. If I have something, I just, here, give it to you. Same, they said, tie the physical to the mental. So if you're close enough, I can hand this to you. You're getting most of it. If you're a little farther back, I can give it to you, but you're getting not as much. It's harder for me to get there, and you're getting the input from this person. <laughs> if you're way in the back, you're looking at the backs of the heads of those people who are looking at the, the, the people in front of them, which is distracting. You get a lot less of what I'm saying. <clears throat> so I always laugh. We, Baptists, we sit in the back and don't get offended. I didn't say this. Don't get offended. But my mind always says, <laughs> do you love God? If you did, wouldn't you want everything you could get from him? So, I'm guilty too, I don't sit there in the back, but I don't think I kind of I'm kind of a half halfway backslide right now. <coughs> so <laughs> this morning I kind of mentioned about the class of deaf people. Uh, we were here morning, right? He said he just got here, we were talking about it. If you had a class of deaf people that you had to teach. You didn't know sign language, and they couldn't read lips. How are you going to get God's word? You aren't. I'm sorry. You're just not going to do it. You're going to have You draw pictures, you can draw things, but you, you just, you're kind of lost. Well, a lot of us as adults approach kids, and we're in the same goal. Same problem, and we don't even know it. And that's frustrating. To understand how to speak to kid to be able to get the most out of the word. Not word. We have a gentleman in our church, and he's God's man, and he knows God's word. He can find, cut that down to the fine lines, and he knows it inside and out. And the problem is that he's teaching children. And he gets into class. God's word. He is expounding God's word and he's doing it right. The problem is, he's in front of a class of deaf people and he's not speaking the language. And those children here, remember the old Charlie Brown cartoons? The teacher? God. Jesus. That's what they're hearing. He has no relationship with them and he's not speaking their language. He means well. Every church has those people. I want to preface this right now because a lot of people, how do I fix it? Don't. You can only fix you. And I want to make sure that you don't because I do not approach this man. I talk to him when I can. If he brings it up, we discuss things and I try to help him. But you can't do that because that's not what you do. That's what God can pray about it, things like that. But one of the big points in this is fix yourself. Don't worry about the others. Back off. You're in front of the deaf class. They don't understand. Or you're in front of kids. They don't understand. Or you're one of the apostles. If you recall, the apostles got to, I don't remember what city. They got there and there were Jews from all over, different languages. What God do? Man from the last class. He gave tongues. They could speak in tongues. So I could talk and they could understand. And if it was important enough for God to do, it's important enough for us to do. All I'm going to try and help you to get to is so that you will understand, at least understand. An hour I can't get you there, but I can get you started. So that you understand what these kids are thinking. You understand where they are. So you understand that you may not be reaching them. Are not talking God's word, but all they hear is wah, 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 wah. That's a bad place to be. 
Let's start here now. I'm going to wait for the ladies to sit down because I have a question. Okay. Either last, they're going to get hit. <laughs>
You get bored when you make notes. We got those papers. Very top thing, old titles. Does anyone can relate to children if they want to? Now, how many of you love kids? Now, that's a loaded question. You should be very, very kind of tentative about putting your hand up on that one. If you love kids, then you just told me you're willing to change. And I find that we are our biggest enemies when it comes to dealing with kids. Because I'll tell you who I have the most trouble with. Doesn't matter, men or women, we've been teaching Sunday school for 30 years. I know how to do this. Wait a minute. Those children's experience is totally different than the kids you had two years ago, than the kids you had ten years ago. If you're using the same methods, they may still work. I don't know, but you can better check. And how you check? I'm an engineer. I'm not in the ministry. God didn't call me to the ministry. I wanted. I surrendered. He said, "Nope, you can be an engineer." So I fix problems, and I'm very good at it. And I've had a lot of psychology classes. You don't need to get into psychology. I recommend you don't go near them. Don't try to psychoanalyze because you'll get bogged down, and you'll be carrying so much baggage, you won't be, you'll be worthless. So I will go into plants, factories, see equipment, see people working on assembly lines, see people working. It's the, the operator and machine interactions. And I watch these things. I set up a sewing plant. In Lansing, Michigan, for Heinz Brecker, uh, American Sun. 490 plus women on three ships, all sold. Wow, that was that was interesting to say the least. Um, and women are tough when they. I know how to do this. You're a young little snot-nosed kid. You're not going to tell me how to. Do it. And I was 35, 40 years old. And I was a snot-nosed kid then. So it took a lot of. <coughs> How do I communicate this with them? Because my understanding was, okay, this is what needs to happen here. And you need to do this. First she does her part, then you do your part, like an assembly line. And I knew how this had to happen. I took the data that said, I've got to do A, then I can do B. I can't do B before A. And they would fight me on that. I learned real quick, don't let people get in your way. Don't. I said that wrong. Don't let yourself get in your way. I let the data tell me what to do first. And then I showed them. And when it made it clear and helped them see it, then they could understand that. So when you get to your Sunday school class, where do you get your data? Your kids. God's blessed me, and then I've had years of training of reading people and reading crowds. I'm doing it right now. Looking around. And I'll tell you that the last class I gave, you'll, find, you'll get a kick out of this, is, you know, when I say something and I can see people, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, they understand, they're agreeing. Everybody's doing this. One lady was going, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting there thinking to myself, yeah, she's about my age. She's probably been teaching Sunday school a long time, and I'm stepping on her toes, and she doesn't like it. I'm not stepping on her toes. Feedback from the kids, the data, the reality is stepping on your toes. Had a lady in our, in our, uh, I love her, nice lady, had this great idea. Got these index cards and we're going to put a Bible verse on the card. This is for first through fourth grade. And the kids will memorize that Bible verse. Yeah, she's laughing. I do not laugh when people bring me ideas. See, the engineer in me takes over. That's a good thing. I wish you guys had that. It's, I get real serious about it. It's like, well, we'll try it. I'm not smart enough to know if it's going to work or not, so I let the kids tell me if it's going to work or not. So we'll give these cards out. Memorize these Bible verses, kids, and it's in the lesson and whatever. We do all kinds of things with it. She loved it. It was her idea. I'm watching this, and there's something I would recommend. When you're in your class, I don't, unless I'm teaching, I don't watch. I don't pay attention to who's teaching. I get someplace where I can watch the kids. And I'm, and I'm really getting a lot of feedback. And I'm watching. Be careful of your professional Christians. Believe me, we've got them in third grade over here, about our church, where they can be looking at you and smiling, and they're glazed over. They aren't hearing a word you're saying. 
They've been trained by our churches. And unfortunately, we do that because we have boring lessons or we do something. We're not getting the feedback. And so they've learned to be professionals. And unless you can spot them, <laughs> you think you've got attention. You don't. So you need to be paying attention to that. That's a hard thing to spot, but please try to learn on that one. Let me preface that. Everything that I'm giving you today, it takes a lot longer to learn than an hour. I'm giving you some seeds, some things to work on, some things to think about. Um, I don't think you'll be able to spot the professional Christians. It takes a little bit of practice. Um, I have people that have come down to our junior church and been teaching for years, and they'll come in and wow, these kids over here were really paying attention. And I'm thinking, you just don't have any idea. You thought they were praying there, down there texting. So, don't get fooled. Now, <clears throat> I wanted to preface some of these things, like last year. Um, I taught on the cool factor. And what that basically was, was that if I can get those kids to trust me, I can impart that trust on other people. If the kids don't trust you, I don't care if they love you, and I don't care if you love them. If they don't trust you, you can love them to death. You're not getting anywhere. Womp, 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 womp. It's not love. It's trust. If they trust me, I can lead them to Christ. Their parents love them, and a lot of their parents can't lead them to Christ. You've got to have the trust. How do you get that trust? We're going to talk about that. That's a, most of it's communication. That's what we're going to talk about today. But that's what I talked about a lot last year. Now, to give you an example. We have a lady in our church, and I love her. Her name's Miss June. Miss June's been there forever. Our current pastor's been there how many years, Greg? 40, 41 years? Miss June's been there every one of them years, and she's teaching, and she still does her flannel ground. She is not a steady Sunday school teacher where she does the flannel graph, but it's a tradition. Miss June does the flannel graph at Christmas, and she does the flannel graph at Easter. My wife and I took over the junior church, first through fourth grade, and the tradition was Miss June comes in there. Well, she comes in, Miss June's about this tall. She is as mean as a bear. Oh, I love her, don't take this wrong. But she's very straightforward, she's very rough sometimes. And so, for an example, because I like people like that, I really do, because I know the harder they are on the outside, they're protecting their vulnerabilities. They're really soft and sweet on the inside. They are, but they're not going to let you know that. We were in the kitchen one time, doing something for some, I can't remember, it was a banquet, a meal, whatever. Miss June's in there, I'll help out in the kitchen, and Miss June lost it. Somebody wasn't doing something right. You people aren't doing what you're supposed to be doing! And those women scattered, they're all gone. <laughs> I don't run for Miss June. It's like I said, I understand this is just, she's growling a little bit, but she's okay. And she turns to me and says, well, if you're not going to leave, get to work. <laughs> so, I do. Well, Miss June and I kind of have a special relationship because I don't run from her. So, um, she is, I tell you that to tell you this. Now I've got to have her come down to the junior church and do her flannel graph. And she's like, I said, she's this tall. So the flannel graph can be up high, it's down low. So the people in the back, they can't see. And when kids can't see, they're nonverbal, they don't pay any attention. So I have 80 kids in there in four rows, and I've got the last three rows in the back are just dead. They're gone. They're not so, okay, what am I going to do to fix this? Well, I didn't spend a lot of money. The next year, um, we uh, I brought in some lights, and I didn't do a lot. I bought these theater lights. We had them in the church. So. And they're about $60 for a can. Um, and I put up a step ladder, took the light on the top, and I duct taped it to the top of the step ladder. So we're not talking about fancy. And I aimed it down on where her, her uh, flannel graph was going to be, plugged that thing in. I borrowed Greg there, he's in the middle, he goes to church with me. I borrowed his video camera, so I'll borrow stuff. And I hardwired it to, we have a computer and a projector that we play music and stuff on, similar to what Steve has over here. And I hardwired it through there. Put the camera on Miss June, turned the light on, turned, dimmed the lights down, and projected her up above where she was working. Wow, this is something the kids recognize. But 
Now, I want you to understand what went on here. Miss June comes in and says, I'm not doing this. These lights are in my eyes. This is stupid. I'm not doing this. Oh, and on top of that, I stuck a wireless mic on her. She's like, ah, oh, this is, don't need this. I'm loud enough. <laughs> well, I don't back down and I don't confront her. I just said, this is what we need to do. It's a big room. The kids have trouble hearing you. And you see this. Well, she fought me the whole way. She did it. Now, all I've had is really basically a pretty tight shot on the flannel graph with, and they could hear her one thing. It's a flannel graph. She didn't change a thing she did. She hated it. She's never doing it again. All those type of things. Well, the next week, something happened that never happened before. Kids were coming up to Miss Junior. Oh, that was great. Zip off they go. <laughs> that was Christmas. Comes to me and says, "Not this year. This was a few years back." He says, uh, "What are we doing this again?" Okay. Easter. Okay. About a week or two before Easter, you have the lights and stuff ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just like the last time. Yeah. And then she she wants to help. You think we should put it up on a platform so I can see it better? All I did was take something that is there and adapt it a little bit in the language of the children. They're used to video. They're used to TV. They're used to those type of things. Took something that existed and made it speak to them a little bit more. I want to do that with you guys. All right. I was watching when we were doing the superhero song this morning. <laughs> Some of you people are are just telling those kids you don't want them to say. Just telling them that. Because they're not listening to what you're saying. They're listening to what you're doing. Doing motions. So as you're doing the motions, so then this isn't important. There was one older fellow, I love him, front and around this end. He was great. He's out there and he's like, superhero in the star. I'm like, that's the kind of guy we need. That's what the kids are listening to. When I say listening, that's what they're, they're paying attention to. I tell you, we have an Awana program. We run about 250 kids in Awana on uh, Wednesday nights. Uh, my wife is up front. She's leading the singing. I'm running the computer about halfway back. Seth that where I need her projected to be. And there's kids all around me. And I usually don't stand up because I'm big. And I'm in the center aisle. I stand up. I got a row of kids behind me. You can't see anything that's going on. So I usually sit down and run the computer, run the music. So I get a perfect view, and I'll look around and I'll see helpers, adults. Some of them are not doing anything, and it's just like a little black hole of nothingness around them. The kids that are right around them, they're not doing the motions, they're not singing. The ones that are doing the, this kind of stuff, I got kids that are just doing this kind of stuff. They're doing what the adults do. So if you don't do it, they don't do it. That's that. 85% of what you're saying to them is all nonverbal. So it's very funny to me that we can say that 85% says this isn't important, and then you go, this is important. <laughs> they don't listen to the 15%. You lost them. And then you don't understand why you can't get them to do what you want them to do. <laughs> all right. I digress a little bit. I'm going to need some feedback because I'm kind of going off on a different trail this morning. <laughs> All right, we wanted to talk about communication. Oh, let's talk about kids. We need to do this before we go anywhere. Have the baby, can't speak any English. But understood everything that you said to them. Baby felt, what did the baby feel? Baby felt good. Baby, what did she say to him? Oh, I like you. You're okay. It's safe here. This is a good thing. <coughs> Then they get older. We got two, three, four-year-olds. I usually say don't touch the kids. And that's not a don't touch the kids, period. That's don't touch the kids. We have a lot of kids. Oh, I have one young lady. I didn't use this example this morning. Perfect example. I should have used it this morning. Her dad's in prison. Her dad raped her older sister. She knew about it. This girl's, I don't know, she's a little one. Um, you don't ever want to touch a little girl or a little boy like that. You don't know what they've been through. You don't know what you could set off. 
I need a helper again. I need a helper here. Yep, come on up here. <laughs> You're as close as I can get. I was, looking, I was looking for a ponytail, but I don't have a ponytail. Now, that doesn't mean nonverbal is very important. To these kids, it's extremely important. They want you to touch them. They want contact. They want, they long for. Let's preface this thing. Two-year-olds, infant nursery, three-year-olds. You gotta pick those kids up. You gotta do stuff like that. Once you get them over into like where they're a little older than toddlers, there's a line. You don't want to be picking them up. Oh, the other thing is, if you're in Awana, and I've seen this happen, and the worker has their favorite, and they pick up the favorite, and they're sitting on their lap during a lesson or something like that, real bad thing. If that kid loves it, the worker loves it, but if you're like me and you're observing the kids all around, there's 10 kids sitting around there going, I'm pretty worthless, aren't I? They don't take me in their lap. I'm not as important. Again, you can tell them they're important all day long. Now that worker will have very little effect on those kids, so be careful about that. Favoritism, even if they're in your family. Now, you're easy. You just got to stand. Okay. You've got to imagine she's got a ponytail. Maybe she doesn't. We have a guy in our church, Norm, nice guy. He has come up with his own little method. Of, and it's all the girls. And they'll come in first through sixth grade for a one, first through fourth grade for a junior church. And they'll, both. they'll come up and he wants acknowledgement. You don't always have to talk to him. He'll just reach up and he grabs their ponytail and just wiggles it a little bit. He calls it pulling. You ought to see it on a Sunday morning. I'll have 40 little girls run up for him. <laughs> haven't said a thing. Norm's had a whole conversation with them. Adults miss that. They want to talk. The kid doesn't want to talk. You're okay. I like you. Everything's fine. Off the kid goes. That's all I'm thinking. That's all I just have. Oh, oh, we got to help her here. With the boys, sometimes I will just reach over and give them a skull cap. I got a big hand. Just hold That's all. That's one on top of the head. Sometimes if, it's, if the kids, they, they know it's me, they won't even turn around. Okay, I just, that's the contact, that's, that's non-threatening type thing. Uh, I want to make sure that that kind of stuff, those are good things. You have said a world to that child, and you haven't said a word. I have one little girl, Julietta. Um, mother hasn't been coming a whole long time. She, got her sister and her, her come. They're both in my junior church. Um, they were in line to get registered for Awana. And I walked up. And Mom's standing here. Julietta's standing here. And I said, Julietta, how are you tonight? Second grade. First grade. First grade. She goes. Did she say anything to me? Not verbally. But if you know how to read it, she just told me a whole story. Perfect. I acknowledged her, and guess what she did? In a first grade method, she acknowledged me. Just this, okay, I know you're there, it's okay. Her mother got mad. You need to say hello to Mr. Fink. I said, chill. <laughs> I said, we're having a conversation here. And I continued to talk to Julia. And told her different things like this, and she pink. She said, okay, I'm here, I know you're there, I know you're there, I can hear everything. The stance. That's how they talk. She just goes into this stance. Little boys, they like to fidget. And they're not looking at you, but they've acknowledged you. As soon as they start fidgeting, okay, I know this is going on, but, you know, I'm, I'm, and again, it's like, it's like talking to deaf people. They're not being rude. You just got to understand what they're saying. They are, you kind of overload them. Little kids don't, can't handle a lot of things like we do. So, so okay, I'm going to let some of this stress off this direction. I can, I'm acknowledging you. I know you're there because if you're not there, they're not fidgeting. So you need to understand and kind of read what they're saying to you. You don't have to change a whole lot other than, well, maybe you do. Let <laughs> me preface that. Smile. I like the smiles. Well, these are all communication things. Um, Use your hands, don't, don't be barricading, don't put hands in the pocket.
Okay, this is all telling them, okay, if you put anything between you and them, you just got to be careful. Get a nice loose stance, smile, eye contact, because you won't get a lot of that. They'll, they'll look at you and then they'll look away. You've overloaded them. But it's not bad. The fact is they acknowledge you. You're getting a lot of feedback from them. All this stuff you need to understand so that you're not, uh, so that you don't overdo it, so you don't uh, drive away. Man, I'm getting off on these rabbit trails here. <coughs> How many of you guys were here last night? How many of you men were here last night? Who was snoring in that stinking cabin over there? <laughs> I know who he was, but I won't tell you. Man, oh man, I couldn't believe three in the morning this guy is just snoring like you wouldn't believe. Wakes me up, I'm like, what is that noise? Oh my goodness, and that's a perfect example of what I do in class all the time. Head down a rabbit hole. Two minutes, three minutes, because you guys are all getting sleepy as adults. What do you think those kids do? You lose them every two or three minutes. So change, do something different. And I do that. We have videos. I get video advertisements. They're free. Get them on YouTube. There's one where this it's a car tire ad. And the car's coming down the road, and there's a squirrel jumps up in the road and goes, ah! And they swerve the car around, and we play it, and all the kids love it. It's worthless. It is not sanctifying. It is not Christian. But once they see that, I got their attention. Now I can go back to where I need to be. But if I stayed where I was needed to be, thought I needed to be, I've lost them. Wah, 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 wah. You don't want to do that. All right. This is hard after lunch. My goodness. Let's go right up to the top of this paper again, and then we'll jump down a little bit. Um, this is not your Sunday school. This class belongs to the kids. And what can you do to reach them more effectively? I say that a lot, and I get people get angry with me. I can walk around, I'll use my church as an example, but I can go to any church and find this. I walk into a class, and it's sterile. It looks like somebody used one of those laser deals to line up the, the decorations on the walls and everything else. No kid would decorate a room that way. You ever seen the way they do things? They scribble all over the place, and if I gave 10 kids thumbtacks and papers, they wouldn't be in a straight line. They'd be all over the place. And they're comfortable with that. We're not. You need to get a let go of some of those things. Uh, some people are just that type that they like things lined up and it drives them nuts. If it's not, don't drive those kids crazy. They need to do those kind of things. What we do in our class is sometimes we get these big sheets of paper and I'll lay them out on the table and we just give them crayons and draw stuff on them. And I'll put it up on the wall. And they'll scribble, they'll write their name, or we might give them an assignment. We did one, uh, draw birds. So draw birds. Put it up on there. Our associate pastor comes in. <coughs> He's a little bit, likes things straight and neat. He looks up and goes, what is that thing on the wall? I'm not taking it down. It's not your class. Go teach the adults. They don't like this. Kids love it. And they refer to it in your lesson. Oh, you remember when we did this? And then, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That could be another one of those little two-minute things off to the side. Let's jump to environment since I started, since I did anyway. <laughs> remember, it's not your class. Um, in my church, it's hard to get permission to paint walls and such. So I'll use big poster papers. We've got scrim, which I can get scrim. It's like 10 feet wide. It's a mile long. So you make big billboard type things. You can paint on that. You can do whatever you want. Can you tape it up or pan it up to the wall? Yeah, but nothing permanent. Kids love it. You can put whatever you like on there. Those kind of things. You can add a lot of color. You can do a lot of things. And if somebody tears it down, they tear it down. It's not the end of the world. So now I take my glasses off. I can't even read what I'm doing here. Oh, now let's talk about the environment. Because, uh, 
I'm getting my time a little bit mixed around here, so I've got to kind of switch one. We asked the children, we got permission to paint the restaurant. We're in a gym. Nobody wanted the gym. I wanted the gym. Because we can have fun in the gym. We were in the oldest chapel of the building, which was built by the charter members by hand. So if you try to change something in there, whew, you're never going to change anything in there. If you spill something in there, oh my goodness. So it's like kids make messes. Let them make messes. We got to, you know, so when our gym came up, I want the gym. We can spill stuff, we can do things, we don't get in trouble. Ask the boys, got permission to paint the restrooms down there. Ask the boys, what color do you want the restrooms? What do you think? Black. Black. Black, yes. The boys wanted it black with flames. <laughs> but I write it down. What about the girls? Pink, pink, yeah, pink, pink with flowers. And then I know the ladies are going, well, that's not so bad. Let's go back to reception. The boys were very clear on what they wanted to do. Everybody said, well, that's unacceptable. We're not painting the restaurants black and we're not putting flames in there. People think they're in hell. No. <laughs> but the ladies hear the awe oh, and they get, what's, what's your perception? Pink with flowers. What do you think? Pink flowers. All right, well, they're thinking, great big yellow neon flowers, and this thing. you, you got to get to where they are. Now, I don't know that I'm going to paint the restrooms those colors, but I'm going to make sure that somewhere down there, even if it's a big piece of scrim, I'm going to have a big black piece of scrim with flames on it. And I'm going to have a big pink, pink sheet someplace with some flowers on it. And the nice thing about scrim is I can put it up and I can take it down. So what have I done? If I do that, put the black up with the black. Put the I acknowledged it. I'm having a whole conversation with a whole group of them now. They're important. And by doing that with something that they can't change, I have all of a sudden told them how important they are. I've also got a lot of their trust. This guy's listening to what I have to say. And sometimes it's you gotta listen carefully to get the and ask to get the get this wacky ideas out of here. So we want their environment, are you listening, is what I'm trying to say. Are you listening to me? You know, sometimes it's hard. Remember the thing with the horse. you got to ask sometimes, what do you like? What don't you like? And don't get your perception. you got to get their picture. What's in their little brains out? Which is so hard to do. Now, what I covered before is, and real briefly, which takes a lot of practice, I've actually gotten in front of the mirror and catch myself doing this. That's a bad thing to a kid. Oh, man. I remember my dad used to do that just before he beat me. It's like, okay, uh, no. So uh, they may not get beat, but boy, this is, this is a big block. If you're one of these people that gets nervous, you can't do that. You gotta, gotta practice. You gotta practice. It takes a lot of practice. Um, get in front of a mirror. I look out over here. You're not all smiling. When I say that, you start smiling, but you got to start thinking about that because you let your natural face doesn't go to a smile. When you remember, they're reading it, they're reading your face, they're not listening to what you're saying. So if you're getting serious and kind of slumping a little bit, oh, the kids think, what's wrong? <laughs> and there's nothing wrong. You're just being an adult. I'm asking you to work on the 85 percent, which is a tough thing to do. It really is because our habits are not to do that. I find it much easier, but I still have to work at it. My wife is a natural. That's how I learned a lot of the things that I know. Observing. She walks into a classroom with kids, and she's got a sea of them. She has to wade through them. And there are other teachers that are very jealous because they will leave their teacher and come to her. And I thought to myself, why is that? What is she doing? So. The engineer in me said, observe, watch. What is not happening here, what is happening here? And that's what I'm giving you all these things. They're very subtle little things. But if you keep it in your mind that they're not hearing these words, they're hearing this, it's a lot easier to start changing this and quit worrying about the words. Um, let's touch, touch on uh, discipline a little bit. You 
you've got them an hour, the world has them the rest of the time. Don't waste your time with a lot of discipline. You're not going to change them. I've had people come to me, we don't have structure and you got to do this and you got to sit them in rows and you got to do this. No, because I'll spend most of my time going, shh, shh, sit, sit, oh, come on, sit, sit. When we start our junior church, it's what I call organized chaos. And I have adults that will just, I don't know how you do that. I can't stand it down there. As soon as they say that, I know I got the right environment. I got everything right. Because it's not your class, buddy. <laughs> the kids up in the main auditorium are sitting there going, oh, this is terrible, I hate this. Guess what? <laughs> it's the same thing. That's set for you, this is set for them. We have that superhero song, and I almost did this one. It plays a superhero song. We have kids that run. They're superheroing, man, across the front. Uh, we, we tone it down once in a while. You've got to be careful. Safety, you know, you can't have 80 kids running around. We, that happened the one day. I mean, yeah, they ran over a kid, and it's like, okay, you got to stop them when they do that. But, <coughs> for example, we allow our, I set up the junior church, and I want the young ones in front, just from that, from, there's a will, there's an A. First grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade. The rows set up that way. And every once in a while, I say, got to get in the right row and make them get that way. Because the first graders don't have that much attention span. They need to get as much as they can. Fourth graders are a little more mature. They can handle the distractions. But we allow the fourth graders to get out of their seats when they're singing songs and come to the back where there's lots of room and they can do motions and they can horse around and the boys can bump into each other and do things like that. And they're burning off all kinds of energy. And it's all nonverbal stuff. You, don't, you just got to have somebody back there kind of be the tamer to kind of make sure they don't get hurt. And we have lots of that going on. I got a group of girls on that end doing the same thing. I got a group of boys over here and they're in the back. And I got some of the little ones that are just spinning around in the front. When the music's going on, when it's time to be that way. And we let them burn energy, lots of energy. I have guest speakers that come in. Just people in church that we have come down. And they, they say, I can't believe how well those kids sit still. Because we've trained the kids with the nonverbal stuff. It's time to be wild. It's time not to be wild. So don't pay attention. I try to help the speakers with a lot of nonverbal things. We have Bible costumes and we'll try. And some of them, some people aren't comfortable with that, but I ask them. I have one guy that he, he likes to teach. And he'll say, You want me to get my own lesson? What is your lesson? Joseph and his brothers. And the coat of many colors. Do you mind if we stop in the middle and let the kids act it out? Well, yeah, that'd be cool. But he's, he's very uncomfortable doing that. He won't do it. He can't handle it. He won't do it himself. But we will. So he'll teach up to that point and say, here, let's act it out. We bring the kids out. They put on the Bible costumes and act the thing out. Go back. Now, what have I done? He naturally will not take and do that little ten-minute thing off to the side, change directions. He won't do that. I've done it for him. Have him change the thing he's done. Just to help less than some. But we get a lot of people who say, wow, those kids will sit still. Two things. The trust. Because we communicate with them. They trust us. So we tell them to sit there. It's time to sit there. They sit there. We let them burn off a lot of energy. I don't want to miss any of the good points here. And I am running out of time. Getting them in the, out of the box. We can go out and visit only so many kids. And guess what? They don't trust you. And you're an adult, and you're talking to them, and you can invite them, and you can get some kids to come in. I'll tell you where you get your big bang is if you get your kids to bring their friends. And if they trust you, if you have fun, that's another thing. You always have to have some fun in there. If you have fun, they will do it for you. I like to use this example because this is when I first discovered this. I hadn't started putting all these ideas together yet. This is a few years back. My wife and I are in junior high. It was junior high. I prayed about it. God sent us to junior high. I wondered what we did bad, but that's... <laughs> so, and I love junior highs. I really do. It comes down to, we've been there for a little while, and summer's coming and usually in the summer you lose kids. It's like, eh, we get the summer crowd, we're down. Um, 
that's when I was starting to watch what she was doing, and I started imitating what she was doing. All of a sudden, we got the trust of these kids. And I said, let's have Friends Sunday. Bring your friends. This is Wednesday nights, Wednesday night chapels. That summer, and I still have our associates, still, what did you do? We averaged five first-time visitors every Wednesday night. I, it's all I'd say, why don't you bring your friends? Okay. The trust, they trusted us. All I had to do is tell them to do it. We didn't visit anybody. We didn't even leave the building, Kath and I. We just would do that. And that's an average. So there were some nights we'd have 10, 15 first-time visitors. It's like, wow, what is going on here? And they'd just come back. We usually ran between 30 to low 40s. There were nights we had 96. That was our big number. And it was in a little room. It was tough, but it's a good thing to have problems like that. Um, that was when I realized, well, I could never visit all these kids. This is the way to do this. Get them to go do it. And if I have to change to do it, I love them enough, I don't care. If i got to stand on my head, I don't care. If I get out of my comfort zone, which is one of our notes, yes, I'm going to get out of my comfort zone. The um, keeping it fun. We have a song we sing. My wife found this. It's like a cheer. It's called Let's Go, Let's Go. How's that song go, Greg? I'm missing some of it. I, didn't, I purposely did not want to play a lot of things before you get you off on a different tangent. Um, let's go, let's go, everyone hit the floor. L-E-T-S, let's go. That's it, L-E-T-S-G-O, let's go, let's go. And they got these little kids and they're like cheering. And this thing, it starts off, they got their hands up, they go, let's go, let's go, L-E-T-S-G-O. And you got to do the foot one. It's L-E-T-S, and you got to cross them and come back, and it's that fast. L-E-T-S-G-O. I hate that. <laughs> we play it every Sunday, and I do it, and I smile, and I nearly have a heart attack because it's long and it's just like an aerobic workout. <laughs> and I thank God for that song because I watch those kids just love it. And one of the keys is I do it. Greg helps with us. He does it. You see two grown men doing this song, and we don't short on the motion. I mean, you got to get your arms up and you got to, I'm giving them all 85% saying, this is important, you're important, let's do this. And it's funny to watch it in part, it's just like a sea, a wave that goes out over these kids. Because I'll be running the computer and I'll stop because I got to do something with the computer and then I got to, and I'll hear somebody, hey, <laughs> so I get back in and do it. Their friends come. It's funny, I have friends, visitors, that get more into the songs than the regular kids because they have the church. And as soon as they start having fun, in our Awana program, my wife goes the open. And that's another organized chaos. We got 15, 20 minutes of that, 250 kids. It is wow. And it drives people right out. The adults hate being over there. Um, I, uh,
14. 14 year old. They just crossed the halfway bridge. I gotta have those hundred dollar jeans. They'll beat me up in school if I don't. I gotta have those shoes. I, I won't fit in. You're not buying that car, are you? Oh, well, it looks so lame driving in that thing. <laughs> and guess who makes the decisions about going to church or not? Kids. I have a parent after a parent after a parent coming up to me going, I don't know what you're doing, but I can't keep this kid home. They get me up Sunday morning, I want to go to church. Those parents that are borderline parents that, no, I really don't want to go to church. If they're looking for an excuse not to go, when the kid comes up and says, hey, I want to go. They're done. You got it. And that's what's happened with those 12 new families that we got to come. They're not, they're not solid church members yet, but they're coming. They don't come all the time. And when they don't, I make sure that I go up to the kid and go, oh, we missed you. I know I told my parents have been here. <laughs> I like to stir that pot. I think, oh, I got a couple of things. I can cover a couple of the last few things. Let's go down to the last thing. Get out of your comfort zone into your there. We talked about that a lot. And that goes back to the first, which is clear from the top. 1 Corinthians 13, 11. When I was a child, I love God. He can clear things up so well. I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. We need to relearn all that stuff we put away if we want to win these kids. It used to be why we have staff members, senior high staff members. That used to be the class. And we lose them in senior high. Guess where we lose them now? 12 years old. Fifth and sixth grade is the minute. And if you've lost them then, I don't care who you got in senior or junior high, and they're done. So, and that has to do with the technology we have today. We get on the computers. This is a real scary thing. I won't belabor this. Their maturity level is being pushed up without the mental faculties to support it. So you got kids that are in sixth grade, little girls that are dressing like Britney Spears, and they have no idea the sexual connotations. Their mind can't fathom these things. Our job is to make sure that we can at least get that kid to talk, to talk in the same language. You say, don't dress that way. <laughs> you got to get their trust, and you got to go nice and slow and easy, and you can get them to change. I'm sure, I covered all the I've covered all the all the all the big points. I really feel bad about this. I was I wanted to get into a lot more. Um, let me give you a real quick example. When we were in we're junior high, this is just a perfect example. It, it happens now, but this was just perfect. Um, had these two real rough girls come to visit with us. I mean, nasty rough. Those are my type people. Like I said, I love them. Hard and casey on the outside, because they're usually pretty soft on the inside. They're protecting something. They hated my wife. They just hated her. But they'd come talk to me. So, now you got to understand, you have kids like this, unchurched kids. we got to make sure we keep them there, because that's the only way they're going to get to heaven. I didn't necessarily like them, but I did like them because they're image bearers of God, just like we all are. So who am I to say that they shouldn't be there? Who am I to say that they're too rough? I just want to keep them coming. Maybe there's a chance that it'll soften them up and get saved. So there's a, we had a young lady that was a regular church member with a big mouth, and she said something to him. Next week, this wasn't my doing. Next week, those two girls came and brought five of their friends. So there's seven of them. And the one comes up to me and says, when she steps outside of that door, we are going to beat the snot out of her. And she didn't say snot. <laughs> and I said, you're in church. You can't do that. Well, then we'll wait until she goes outside the door. We'll get her in the parking lot. And she had been coming for a little bit. So I had some of this trust factor. And I thought, well, we got to push it. I said, 
I don't want you beating her up at all. Well, she said, I said, she's an idiot. She shouldn't have said that. All of a sudden, this girl's like, oh. Well, I want to beat her up, but I won't because you said not to. See, when you have that kind of power, you have so much responsibility that it's scary. You have to be very, very, very careful what you say. I didn't realize that I had that kind of power at that time. I know that there are Sunday school teachers that mean well that say the wrong thing. Well, if you don't get rid of that sin, God's not going to love you. That's a out -out lie. But they may not have said that exactly that way, but the child may have perceived that. And you've got to be very careful. Your responsibility has just grown magnitudes, because you're wah, 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 doesn't say much, but when you start with the 85%, you are really saying a lot. You had better make sure you're right, and you had better be careful with what you do. So, I want to leave you with that. A few more points in there, but the, those are the major ones. Communicate, change yourself to speak the same language with the kids, get them to trust you, then you lead them anyway. And don't be afraid of your environment. If you're if you're comfortable, they're probably not. That, that, that I, I'm glad to give with that because I get so many people. Well, I don't know, I don't know. You got to if you're out of your comfort zone, you're probably doing it right. So, thank you. Let's pray. We'll be back. Lord, I thank you.